life. Are we? Are we? Yes. Wait. There you go. We are. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Because of a time distortion, we are one day early because of daylight well, saving not, time uh, or something. It? It's, it's like, yeah, <laughs> we're not just a day early. We're like, well, we are a day early, but we're also like an hour. Like an hour. Late. For you, but for for bang me, on but time. not for me. you, because yeah. weird thing is that in 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 the America, well, I think yeah, it's in the American continent, but that's USA, Canada, and whatever, and we switch time one week earlier. So right now, there's a time paradox in which we don't we are not not five hours difference but four hours difference so that, that's that's yeah that <laughs> it's anyway. tiny whiny something whiny <laughs> <laughs> uh, well Sorry. that goes with that that goes with like the episode from two weeks ago where uh, we put you know well like tilly said you, if you, you put time as a modifier on a word and it's way more cool it is <laughs> kind of so uh we were just discussing cuz um i'm planning my vacation my summer vacation uh and uh, i planned uh since i'm uh well vegas is uh, a bit expen it's a bit on the expensive side and you know i can't do that every year and uh well I, and also well there's also the fact that i wanted to try something else so uh, I decided to try this uh, smaller, not a small convention, but smaller than uh, Vegas, a uh, little convention called Shore Leave, which is one of the grandfathers of all Trek conventions. I think they are in there. I have to check, but recently, I th what was it, their 40th anniversary? Something like they're one of the... Yeah, surely 41. So that's going to be their 41st convention. So, the, you know. There's quite a lot of decent people going as well. From, yes. Uh, look at the guest list. So the convention is in... Uh, so I, I'm in Quebec City. And the convention is in... Well, near... In the Hunt Valley in uh, the Maryland area, near Baltimore. Which is about a 10 to 12 hour drive. Um... I could fly, but uh, two things is the since it's not downtown or near any kind of easily accessible airport, it's hell. And two, well, uh, since I'm going with uh, my dear other half, uh, well, it's easier to share uh, gas. We'll rent a car and, you know, it's easier to share gas than to, uh, you can't really share a plane ticket. So, <laughs> no, I mean, is it um, a weekend or is it? Yeah, yeah. It's, and the thing is also, yeah, it's a, it's on a weekend, where uh, the Vegas Con is on from the Wednesday to uh, to the Sunday. So you 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 need like to have like it. Thing is, it yeah, it kind of screws a whole week. Well, since I'm driving now, it's gonna probably gonna screw a whole week for me too because I out. I, since I want to be able to enjoy the Friday, I have to leave on a Thursday, and mm. I and I can't do a twelve or ten to twenty of our drive, uh, you know, after uh, on the Sunday uh, at the end of convention. So I have to stay over to the the Monday. But uh, you know that allows for a bit more flexibility. And one thing is, I only need three hotel nights. It's, yeah, I think three. So yeah, from the. Not my brain is, but you know, I have to. I I might. What I might do is actually stop in Ticonderoga, which is like a third or a halfway down, and mm. say hi to some friends and visit and do my, prepare myself for, for more trek by uh, going to the uh, going to the set tour for the what six fifth or sixth time I I. I you know, the thing is, I'm at the point where I can't count. I, I can't. I have to think about how many times I got there. 
I went there, so you know. <laughs> and then uh, more than me. <laughs> more oh like, more, yeah. More well, like one day, you know, we'll 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 raise some money for you. We'll do a GoFundMe. <laughs> so bring James to the U.S. so he can say fuck off to someone's in their face. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Okay. Uh, uh, that would be quite. Uh, to be honest with you, it's 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 on the list of things to do, but uh, it's not on the. I mean, fire. I mean, going to the UK or going to Europe for me is also on my list. I mean, my 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 folks went uh, last uh, last year, and I was I was quite envious. Uh, well, hopefully Brexit won't screw it up, and I'll still be able to visit. But <laughs> that that's that's something it's, else. No, I mean the whole Brexit thing is like. It'll happen. Yeah. If it happens, well, anyway, if it's, as it's, as Commonwealth residents, I think it's still kind of easier for Canadians to get in the UK. Uh, yeah, I mean, from what I can gather, it's not actually going to have much much of an impact on um, Commonwealth countries. But then I don't know because that all might change next week. Who knows? Well, we'll see. Anyway, for now, we're we're still in a great big family, as Khan would say. <laughs> Mm. Uh, but yeah, so uh, uh, just this, you know, plugging, uh, talking of um, shore leave, few interesting guests, not all Trek related, but those who are, oh my, uh, for his first appearance in a convention, I think, uh, Ethan Peck, Mr. Spock himself, well, new beard Spock, uh, which I believe the actor shaved following his role. <laughs> Um, and uh, and uh, I think he was at Las Vegas last year, wasn't he? No, he wasn't no? announced. Spock was has not had what had had not been announced back then. Anson Mount was there last year. I'm wondering but if he was at Ethan York. Peck was was not. And I think yeah, because shortly is before Vegas, so Ethan Peck will be that that so shortly will be his first uh, Star Trek convention. So Anson Ooh. Mount and Ethan Peck are currently the Trek guests. Uh, well, Trek actors guest. Let's, let's say it like that. And uh, will be joined by Michael Shanks of uh, Stargate fame and Lexa Doing of Andromeda fame. She also played a few roles in Stargate. And uh, I, well, I think it was in Jason X where she played on. Um, she, she, th funny thing is, she played with the um, uh, another uh, actor who was on Andromeda. I don't remember her name, but basically they were world reverse because in uh, in Andromeda, she Alexa plays an android, well mm. the AI or the ship's AI or whatever, an android, and uh, but in in Jason X, it was the the other actor who played the. The and ships android or something. So it was, I don't know if it was one on purpose, but it, it was still funny to see. Uh, and also, you'll see uh, Erica Dernis of uh, Supergirl, Supergirl's uh, Alora Zorel, uh, and uh, Saving Hope's Dr. Alex Raid. Uh, also, David Plaffy, uh, who played Anubis. Hmm. Uh, and announced just today, Laura Vandervoort. Uh, Van uh, Supergirl's Indigo, and uh, she played uh, Kara and Supergirl in Smallville, and also um, Alex Malari, who was in uh, Dark Matter, uh, and uh, in Insomnia and True Justice. So, looking forward to that. So that's for the actors. There's a few, b whole bunch of authors come in over. So you have the odd, the uh, usual suspects in when we're talking Trek literature. Uh, including uh, Greg Cox, I'm <coughs> sorry, <coughs> Greg Cox, uh, Keith R. A. DeCandido, Peter David, Dave Gallanter, uh, Dayton Ward, uh, David Mack. So get ready for some uh, author shenanigans. Also, uh, Robert Greenberger. If you go on the Tricksphere YouTube page, you will see I met with them last year, and there's a few interviews. Uh, mm. with them. I have uh, an interview with Keith uh, alone and I have another one with uh, Robert, Dave Gallanter and um, someone else. Someone else. <laughs> well, uh, sorry, I'm bad with names. But uh, yeah, so uh, so yeah, that's cool. And if you see Keith uh, the Candido, uh, 
what one thing I really like about him is I was a huge fan of the Coming and Conquer games, and he mm. is the only guy who ever wrote a tie novel for Coming and Conquer. Really? <laughs> yep. He actually, I have it. I actually got got the novel. It's uh, based on the uh, third game. It's kind of a prequel to the third game. And uh, he actually signed it for me. He said, the, let me see if it shows well on camera. It says, beware, Tiberium. Sign Keith the Kenny. I can't remember what the third one was. What was the third one? Because the fourth uh, one was... Uh, Tiberium Twilight or something. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah. Third was uh, Tiberium Dawn. I think it was. Uh, well, was pretty much the same. <laughs> you know, nod. Point and, click kill. <laughs> I mean, the the highlight of every coming and conquer is not the game in itself. To me, it's the cutscenes, the live action cutscenes with with Kane. Ah, uh, God, that that made my my uh, my youth. <laughs> um. So yeah, uh, and uh, so and so so that's for uh, authors. So that d those are the ones I know you can go on the website to see. There's also some scientists will be showing up. One of them I personally know, but I'm sure they are all very very interesting and knowledgeable. I'm looking forward to meet them and uh, some performances by the Boogie Knights and Luna C. Which I have to inquire into what they yeah comedy improv performance troupe for Luna C, and I guess the Boogie Nights are a musical. And uh, some decent photo ops as well. You can get uh, Anson Mount and Ethan Peck uh, single actor photos, uh, fifty dollars each, or you can get them as a duo for eighty five. Yeah, I mean uh, they are reasonable prices compared to <laughs> Vegas, so. Uh, <laughs> Because uh, if you if yeah, because if you look at uh, I, I, I have to compare, but I'm pretty sure those are half price. Because usually, like big names in Vegas, uh, yeah, I paid through the nose for my photos with the uh, Anthony Rapp and Wilson Cruz. But I'm happy to have them. But damn, <laughs> I'm 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 glad I prepared a budget for it. Mm. I mean, I touched Anson, uh, uh, not Anson, but I touched Anson, Anthony Rapp, and 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 Wilson Cruz gave me a hug. So sounds so dodgy. That that's that that's that's worth all the money for me. <laughs> that does sound really dodgy. I touched. <laughs> I know, I know, but but uh, speaking of convention, last uh, last weekend was there was a convention in Ireland. Uh, I, um, it was uh, Dublin Comic Con, I think. And uh, funny thing, there's a nice uh, Star Trek fan club, uh, USS Chooch Lane in um, Star Trek e, e area. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm I can't speak Gaelic, but uh, but anyway, so th they had this this coupon for like a free hug with with um, uh, the guy who played Saru, uh, Doug uh, Doug Jones, because apparently he's 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 a hugger, so like they made up those uh, uh, those coupons for a hug with Doug Jones. <laughs> oh boy, but yeah. So uh, I mean, if if you if you look up on there on there, uh, it's one of the one of the discovery one of the big discovery groups is under the management of Damien, who's. Uh, one of the big Irish guys. He, he does a lot of videos with uh, the uh, Star Trek uh, Eagle Moss ships, and I, I, I envy him. I mean, to to be able to get, uh, I don't know if he gets them for free, but he probably gets review units. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm super jealous. He does a good job, but damn, I'm jealous. <laughs> but yeah, um, l l look it up. Uh, it's it's out there. I mean, can you um, imagine the sheer amount of space that you'd have to have there? Mm. One of those. I know. I mean, I've seen a few pictures of people with like they have like cupboards full, and uh, I I mean I only have a few, and like I have like uh, this one. I have like I have this one. That's the Enterprise, the the refit. I have the original. I have the D. <laughs> I mean. 
moving on. <laughs> moving on, but yeah, uh, so, so, if you're into cheap, you can get a few ships on Wish.com. They aren't proper. They're not actually that cheap, though, considering you, by the time you put on um, yeah, yeah. Post but, it I on. mean, they're still cheaper than if you got them from. But they're probably mm. like um, either like uh, re like uh, they probably like either failed quality assurance or they are probably like overstock or something like that because mm -hmm. there's only a few selection like you have enterprise d you have uh you had a future enterprise d from all good things you have a roman warbird a bird of prey and you have the enterprise refit there's only a few so either they are like overstock or sometimes you have what they call the third shift in in some um china um uh, uh, factories where you have like an undocumented third shift will keep producing with you know without the knowledge of uh the the rights owner so like let's say mm. you you have something manufactured in in china well you know you'll get what you ordered but then they produce them they'll produce some more to be able to sell on the side which is uh but Don't of course ask. it's dodgy and it doesn't always meet with quality assurance like like this here my uh my enterprise reef it came like it, it was in uh, it, it was in a um, it, in uh not assembled let's just say because they're supposed to you're not supposed to have to assemble them like it was in all, all apart thankfully i was able to get a refund and i just got some contact glue and put it back together so i got it for free you got that from Wish. Yeah, yeah. F funny, th good thing about Wish is like they're like they don't give a crap. Like if you say that, that it was damaged, you send a picture and they'll just refund you, no questions asked. Because it's easier to do with just it's easier to just give a refund and have a satisfied customer than to have to deal with is it good? Is it did you really how how long ago did you get? So they just don't care and just refund you. Oh. <laughs> Um, so yeah, interesting. Uh, I won't, and, uh, uh, I won't try that myself, but yeah. Uh, you know, if if you're nice, I might I might uh, I might send you one for Christmas. <laughs> 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 it might sound it might sound kind of cheap because you know you'll know where it's from though. Yeah, but you know it's, um, it's some yeah. people this year for Christmas I bought from Poundland. <laughs> oh yeah, well there's a a, a good. Um, yeah. British YouTuber that I, I, I watch these days. It's called uh, he's called Ashens, and mm. he uh, does Poundland. In uh, that's what I I, I love the world. I, I love the the, the the shop's name Poundland and uh, defunctly Pound World, because you know in my dirty mind it has a whole other meaning. But <clears throat> yeah. I do, I do. <laughs> Uh, I, I anyway, love the UK. I love the UK. Uh, on you know, on on a personal note, um, my customer has started working on my enterprise uh, jumpsuit. And she sent me a picture because thing is, she had to, you know, you, you know, do you know how many zippers are in there in that uniform? No, <laughs> off the top of my head, no. I'm guessing quite 13. a lot. Thirteen. I did hear that um, it was something that was quite uncomfortable for them to like not wear, but like when they were um, like kneeling down and stuff like that, yeah, like, maybe, it was quite yeah. uncomfortable. I will tell you when when she when once I get it, but yeah, she she because she, she just got the the zippers that she custom ordered because um, as I might have said in the past, I'm getting the pa the patterns from uh, Bad Wolf Costumes. He mm. made the patterns and he studied from. Like the screen used uniforms, and we got the same fabric, well, as close as possible. It's basically just jeans. It's uh, it's denim, and you have just the right kind of blue, and use the wrong side of the fabric outside, basically. It's, it's kind of weird, but it does it does give a give out a good look. Um, so, uh, talking I'm, of um, denim, have you seen those new um, yes. discoveries? Yeah, they are awful. Nah, I mean, I yeah, I might wear that at the Star Trek convention, but I'm not sure I would wear that like, especially given that price. Like they're what three hundred mm. bucks, three hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, something like that. I mean, 
I've got no qualms about you know official merch and stuff like that. Um, but the prices for those for they they just look awful. They really yeah. do. Um, I know a lot of people prefer the look of them because they don't have the gold and silver and bronze and stuff. But mm. uh, I looked yeah. at them and I've zoomed in in the pictures and everything like that. And they quality yeah, I mean, wise, mm. you you're paying for the brand basically at that point. You're paying for the licensing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the thing because it's not it's probably not you know there's not a lot of design gun you know they they took they adapted from the uniform and just made it made it out of jeans i mean it's kind of like uh like bikinis like it's like it's <laughs> way overpriced for what 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 you technically get but you pay for the brand that's the thing with uh <clears throat> Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, the um, next gen ones that they did, uh, they were pretty cool. Yeah, I quite liked the look of those. Um, and I did see a Discovery jacket. I can't remember who it was made by, and I couldn't work um, find it on the list of licensees whether it was official or not. But it was a leather bomber jacket, Ooh. Um, and it was a Discovery. <laughs> looked one and it looked really really nice and that was four hundred dollars i think it was yeah but, but on you a, know, on a... if, you, if it's leather and it was you know you're paying for quality there i think more than but i don't know and um... yeah and if you're interested in costumes especially discovery costumes um i went upon I, i'm a member of the uss rio group which is um a group for Star Trek Las Vegas. And uh, they actually came into contact with someone who made Star Trek uniforms, like from China. And like they're working, they're now working with them to make a better screen accurate version of uh, the uh, Pike's uh, gold uniform. And I've, I've seen some pictures and like it's getting there. Um, the only mm. thing about ordering from China is make sure, like, if you're able to contact a person, give them your actual size because they they don't they, they don't do American sizes. Like for them, X large is what a medium would be here. So be very careful with that. <laughs> but but um, I'll, I'll try to find it. Um, just hold on. But yeah, uh, if if the group is not uh, not, I don't think it's closed. I think it's an open group. Just search Star Trek Las Vegas USS Rio on Facebook, and um, you'll see like there's a couple of threads. Ooh, again wordplay, a few threads. <coughs> <laughs> and um, actually, here there's a newer version. I'll put it on the screen here. That's some pretty cool stuff. I'm going to see if that's before I share the link. And I'm going to see if it's actually legitimate or not. Well, no, but it, it does. Uh, I'll, I'll send you here. Can I? Sh I probably can share that. No, I can't. Huh. I can at least share you the picture, that's for sure. Uh, here. Anyway, um. You folks have a look, uh, and honestly, it really looks good, and I'm looking forward to see how much it costs, because I probably want one. Honestly, I prefer... Yeah, that does look pretty good, actually. Even if it's not 100% accurate, the fact that it's all the same color kind of hides any kind of inaccuracies, you know? Mm. It's the correct kind of gold, the... The collar is correct, and the sleeves look good, and they even have the ribbing on, like, on the shoulders, and uh, and on the elbows. So I mean, that's the most important part. You, know, you have like the the compression panels on the sides. It's got the important elements, and like the people on the uh, on the group like help, like with the minutia and all. So I'm looking forward to uh, looking forward for a final price and get my hands on the one. Probably for one and maybe uh, my my boyfriend wanted one in in red. I might, you know, do usual and take command because, or I might 
do something different and take it in science blue. I don't know. Hmm. I'll have to see if blue is my color. <laughs> what color was the scan that you got red, wasn't it? Sorry? The color scant that you got was red, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it? it's, it's your command red. But it was TNG, so... Hmm. Well, that's strange. I can't bring up the list of official licensees. It just found a British site, so I'm, I don't share unless it's official. Oh, yeah. Probably... Uh, pro probably... Uh, you know, um, how many uh, boot? You know, not necessarily boot. Well, yeah, technically bootleg, I'd say, but yeah. <coughs> I don't know because they've got. It looks like they've got the official disco T-shirts on there. Oh. Um, and then some of the other stuff looks a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to to make the difference. They're getting better and better. <clears throat> I can see this is official, so we won't share that. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> anyway, so we've got quite a lot to get through tonight. Um, yeah, uh, but before I sent you a little bit of news on, on the Section 31 spinoff. It's not big, big news. It's probably what we expected. But uh, there was a little update. Uh, there was an interview, uh, an, uh, sorry, an INTV conference in Israel. And mm. CBS All Access content head Julie McNamara told the press via deadline that the Section 31 spin-off of Star Trek Discovery will shoot in Toronto, like Discovery, but that's in a couple of years away. So, like, either... So, they, they might actually wait for Discovery to finish. Like, like a, a, a lot of... Um, today's show might you know they might learn from the bbc and from from uk and not stretch shows for longer than they should you know give a good show five years like they did with uh, breaking bad or uh you know, there's a lot of good shows that had the set you know set ending uh remember mm. uh, i was a big fan of life on mars and the follow-up ashes to ashes and life on mars got two seasons or series and Ashes to Ashes got three, and they were really good. And you know, they knew where they, you know, where they they wanted to end it. And that might be the jumping on point, like that it was mentioned before. Uh, co given that what was said previously, that they might wait for Discovery to end, it might actually be uh, be a way of passing the torch from one series to another once they feel like Discovery's told a story that they wanted to tell. Yeah, it's possible. Um, <coughs> it kind of uh, begs the question of like what they're going to do in the meantime. Because I mean, last week we theorised that uh, once Picard's finished, due to like you know shooting schedules and stuff mm. like that, once Picard's finished, they should theoretically go into the next series of Discovery. But it's still going to leave a good <coughs> six month period, and I don't know whether. CBS All Access's original plan wasn't it was was to be like all track all time sort of thing. So there was a series on like throughout the year, but and the way that obviously the Section Thirty One series and Discovery and the Picard show and everything like that kind of like panned out. Well, we'll um, see because there's also other content on the CBS All Access platform plan that's being planned out. I mean, there's the uh, the Twilight Zone series and there's uh, the Stand adaptation. Um, you mm -hmm. know, they're working on other. Uh, content so yes they said like star trek all the time but i mean maybe not like 52 <laughs> weeks a year i think that was like, kind of, uh but i mean i i honestly I give discovery probably five seasons so that would fit in a couple years kind of mm. time for pre-production give picard its send you know its push out um and uh Make sure that uh, Michelle Yeoh is not booked because she she's a busy woman these days. You know she's a UN ambassador for um, I don't know, human rights or something. I have to check, but she's works she's working with the UN. She had uh, she has a new movie coming out, and you know she's still a very mm. busy woman. So um, it makes sense not only in in terms of uh, 
in you know everything else but just just for Michelle Yeoh it it makes sense that they want to wait a few years make sure that she clears the schedule and gets done with all previous commitments that are planning a year or so ahead mm. and then you know so that yeah you know, that makes sense to me <laughs> okay so apparently this is um a legitimate website um and i've just seen this and i want to Ooh. sorry just to completely you know uh, uh, what do you have for me chat hopefully it'll... Ooh, okay let's see here oh yeah okay i want, I want yeah. this i want this looks yeah Looks better than the cheap ones from uh, that you see on the Chinese websites. I mean, yeah, and it does have the Star Trek it. tag at the, you know, if you look in the, uh, in the neck, you know, uh, it does have a Star Trek Discovery tag. So it looks like usually uh, counterfeiters will not bother with. Uh, yeah, with, I mean, with, the, the website actually comes <laughs> up saying a hundred percent officially licensed merch. Yeah, so. so sounds good to me. Yeah, that's fifty one yeah. fifty one quids. So fifty one uh, pounds in USD. So about sixty seven USD for American friends and probably even more for us poor poor Canadians. Mm. Probably plus shipping. Is that is that a UK website? It is, yeah. So I don't oh, know if okay. it would be international delivery. <clears throat> well, hopefully they do. And... Well, yeah, I mean, if I wasn't spending all my money on my next cosplay, <laughs> I'd buy that. But for now, it... No, it's uh, delivered to UK <clears throat> addresses only. Doesn't well, then I can order it. Special. Then I can order two, one for you, one for me, and you can just forward it back to me afterwards. <laughs> Sounds like a deal. Yeah, I don't know how much it would cost in postage. To be fair, but yeah, uh, I mean that it's was. It's not that bad. It's it's it's, uh, it's not something that's heavy. The usually most important thing when you send out something is the weight first of first and above, and you mm. can squeeze a shirt in a relatively small box or. Bag. I really want that. That is the best looking Discovery hoodie that I've seen like ever. Normally, they are that horrible shell-type material that just looks really, yeah. really cheap and tacky. And this is, looks like actual fabric. Well, I'll have a look. <laughs> Probably they might they might have a... Because that might just be the distributor. Like a UK distributor. So they might have distributors elsewhere. So I'll have to keep an eye. But yeah, so... Uh, on anyway. that... Other news? Is there anything else that? Ha well, um, we have a trailer for a certain fan film that came out on Sunday, um, the Holy Core. That was uh, yeah, the trailer came out yesterday. Um, long awaited, uh, long awaited fan film in the TNG uh, look and feel in the TNG era. Uh, looks very good. Uh, high production value. I mean, uh, like. As a nitpicker, like the only thing I have, like, the only issues with the, with the collar and the the rank pins, it's like, mm. ugh. If if you put so much effort in the decor, uh, so so that's a French word, but in the in the um, scenery and in the, in the, um, the sets, could you just like shell out like a few like two hundred bucks to get pins, rank pins from Anovos that don't look bad? Yeah, I mean, I do know <laughs> that. The guy that runs it, he's um, it's all based in England, which oh, okay. makes, you know, um, kind of harder for us to find certain things. Um, but there are because ways. It, yeah, but by the time you take into account the cost and it's a fan film and yeah, yeah, um, yeah. that sort of thing, it's just it really is not worth it um, because it's almost like three times the price just to get it shipped over here. But anyway, the most important thing is the story. <laughs> And hopefully it looks yeah. good. I mean, it has the same theme as uh, uh, this year's Discovery season and probably the same theme also as probably DS9 in general, which is, you know, religion, faith, uh, and, and all. So <clears throat> it's always interesting to have a Star Trek viewpoint on, on those uh, those things. 
So I'm really looking forward to it. Is it just going to be the one 15 minute or is it going to be is going to be a two parter? You know? um, don't entirely know, to be honest with you, because um, the chance encounter one, which was the one that they first did, was around about 20 ish minutes. I think I need to double check that. Um, Sorry, but uh, mm. I do know that uh, Gary, the guy behind it, is very doesn't want to piss off CBS basically. So, oh, um, Chance good. Encounter was uh, 20 minutes and 42 seconds. So I'm guessing that Haley Core will be around about the same. That's, so that's good. Uh, so if you haven't seen it. Go watch, go watch the trailer right now. Do you have? Do we have like a release date, or is it supposed to be soon? Or um, it will <clears> be <throat> kind of Aprilish, I think. Okay, so a- April relatively April. soon. Yeah. Um, at the moment, they're still putting polishes to the uh, the film, so it could be late April, late May, that sort of thing. Because the thing is that there's so many good trailers for fan films that actually never came out, which is really (laughs) frustrating. No comment. Oh, yeah, I know. We won't go there, but... Oh, no, I wasn't even talking about that one. Oh, Um, no. There are There are so many. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Or ones that have taken so long to come out that it literally is a case of, you know, like the hype has kind of gone from them, I think. Mm. Um, but yeah. people will watch them. So, yeah. Uh, All right. But uh, apart from that, there's not really no no huge news. No, like uh, let's see, let's see the usual uh, the usual suspects. No, it's all. No, yeah, I mean I there mean... was no more casting news for Picard. Um, it's a few behind the scenes things. Like mayhem, like prosthetics, yeah, and like makeup and that sort of thing, died around places like Trek Movie and uh, Games Radar and stuff like that. But nothing, there's nothing big in terms of news. Um, I think the next big news will kind of hit. What we fourteen episodes this season, so probably around about episode twelve. I would have thought um, before we start and finally get. Um, some sort of big news to do with uh, the Picard show, but apart from that, I don't think we'll get much more. Yeah. Who knows? Because we weren't expecting any casting announcements uh, last week, and we got them, so... Well, now the thing is, now we're going to expect some more. <laughs> yeah. Um, but apart from that, there is no real big news, Trek news-wise, this week, yeah. so it's... All quiet. And then, as usual, like, Tuesday or Wednesday, it's all going to come down after we've done this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like two weeks ago, we said, oh, there's nothing happening. It's quiet. Yeah, well, and then, like, I next day, the, um, we have. I check the CBS press site, um, like, once a day, but um, I notice it's kind of hard for me to catch it. Um, at the right time because obviously the time difference and stuff mm. um, the last announcement for the casting came out about half 11 UK time so uh, that would have been like what 6.30ish New York time and then like 3 o'clock afternoon mm. um, LA time so it's kind of like end of the day in America, but like yeah, it was like late afternoon, yeah, yeah, but like proper end of the day, kind of like tomorrow, yeah. That's um, not when you have to announce stuff, you have to announce it early in the morning so everyone can have you know have a go at it. Ah. Yeah, your live stream's just gone, it says device not available. Yeah, yeah it's the, the camera, but there it's it's good now. All good, it guy here. I was thinking to myself, no, you cannot leave me to host this by myself. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, bye. I don't know. My my voice remain. I mean, I'm still here to guide you. Guide me. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let's move on to this week. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we kind usually, of we usually don't got... jump into the episode like that early in the show. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, we kind of like 
got a firm confirmation this week, didn't we? When uh, what timeline and when it's set and it is set in the twenty first and five to to, to to different timeline because Ooh. Kurtzman signed contracts with CBS and Paramount, and now yeah. it's like there's a different between the no, it's bullshit. It's of course it's like prime prime timeline original timeline is the same thing and thanks to a wonderfully edited uh recap uh, mm-hmm. that they did for this week's um uh, episode uh actually there's a nice thread on twitter uh by scott uh what's the last name ah, of course i had it i just when i retweeted it, i'll just go back on my on my Twitter feed here, it, uh, yeah, Scott Gamzon, and he said, uh, I'll quote him on that. He said, um, a bit of uh, a bit about the evolution of the recap for episode eight of Star Trek Discovery. As I was cutting the original episode, I was wondering if we would revisit the footage from the cage and or the menagerie, and rewatched both multiple times. Um, uh, Olatunde uh, suggested that we attempt some sort of flashback for Pike at the beginning of the episode, ut- utilizing the TOS episode uh, 2S footage in a hyper stylized way. Ultimately, the flashback version proved a bit too confusing. Upon mm. viewing EP Alex Kurtzman suggesting creating a recap of using the TOS footage, and then I incorporated the idea of also making it seems like a flashback for Pike by using the match cut from Jeffrey Hunter's Pike to Anson Mount's Pike. Finally, I would suggesting using the original TOS score and Kurtzman came up with the vision of 1960s era transitions with our VFX team then created. This is what I love about my job, the incredible collaboration that leads to some great and creative storytelling. So, interesting that it was supposed to be some kind of flashback, but I, I honestly prefer the way they went. Uh, like well, yeah, the proper... I mean, it firmly, <laughs> firmly established it because they used footage yeah. from the original pilot. So, But then there are people out there that are saying it's like an alternate timeline because they used the cage footage and the cage was never yeah. originally. But, but, uh, and I was that's... just like... Do people not, you know, do people not watch the Menagerie Part One and Two because all the footage is there? Yeah. But um, that's the, that's something that I feel hindered Star Trek for the longest time. The idea that everything, absolutely everything, every every change has to be explained. Mm. And um, I probably said that in the past, but you know, because. The Star Trek audience is supposed to be an intelligent one. It's supposed to be able to know what's what. And if you have an intelligent audience that can't understand that you cannot remake the 1960s look of a TV show in 2018, that's when it was uh, season two was produced, I mean... There's something wrong. Well, yeah, my camera's really not. not ah, but yeah, but there's something very wrong if you can understand that simple fact, or if you can understand that the makeup for the Klingons. You know, the only reason it changed is because they had more money when they did the movies, and mm-hmm. because, you know, in TNG, like, they were able to afford it, and and. Again, the biggest mistake was explaining explaining away the the Klingon change was like crushed. It's like yeah, and and that and the fact that when you see like in in relics when you see the original bridge and in uh, Mirror Darkly when you see the original bridge, those are you know. Uh, East, uh, they like huge Easter eggs, but they're still Easter eggs. You know, you uh. you have to understand that it's, you know, we said it's it's like a skin in a video game. The core is the same, and people say, "Oh, the tech looks so advanced," but I mean, 
They they use transporters, forward and torpedoes, and phasers. The only tech difference is a spore drive, which they're pretty much explained away on how come they're gonna you never use it again. Mm. And it's gonna be mothballed. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not even so much that. I mean, you got to think about it. I mean, yeah, okay, you could make it aesthetically looking exactly like the '60s, but. You've got to think to yourself, okay, but no one would really watch it. I mean, there would be the hardcore, hardcore fans that would. Yeah. Um, but, but, but then even fans like myself, who I don't particularly <clears throat> loathe TOS, um, and, you know, and I will watch it. Um, but, I mean, the first entry for me for Star Trek was um, The Search for Spock. And, you know, after that, then it was like finding all the other films and, mm-hmm. and the next gen and then... You know, DS9, Voyager, Enterprise. And yeah, now pretty, Scott. pretty much the same for me, yeah. Um, I certainly wouldn't watch a, a TV show that looked like I mean, TOS. It's, so it's, I might pick it up and, you know, yeah. But, you know, maybe the thing watch is, it occasionally, is, um, but it wouldn't be something that I would watch yeah. over and over. Yeah, but, you know, people, it's, it's again... Um, I feel like I'm repeating myself every week, but it's a, it's always a case of we're we're th- we're thinking we are, at, you know, bigger than we are. Like uh, like the core set of fans, like the ultra nerd ragey, like they think they are like an army when they're like a, a, a you know a drop in the an ocean. An army of ants. Yeah, but thing is. They're they're more like just like uh, an annoyance, like a little scratch on on more than anything. It's kind of like like all of those like saying, "Oh, we're gonna boycott the more you know uh, Captain Marvel like because she hates men and all." And then like he made like four hundred fifty five million dollars on the yeah, weekend. So that's like not even not even gonna go with that because <laughs> but, but I just don't, just I just don't get the mentality of it, you know. Um, yeah, I think I, I made I, a honestly, sarcastic comment the other day saying, "Yeah, I'm not going to watch it because she she's mean to men. She's a poopy head." Because it's just <laughs> like you know, that's the sort of like we're, reaction. Because we're, we're going to misquote the thing that we we took offense from and run away with it, mm. and that's pretty much how it works. But yeah, so um, going back to uh, what we're supposed to talk about. Yeah. Um, the actual episode so yeah the recap was really well done and honestly I was like oh pretty much like the whole dream. like they I was like I was like they went there they actually fuck went there and I, I was really happy because even though it will not shut up those folks you know just give us more ammo yeah I mean it, well, it's not even so much that for me I think it was just it was nice of a yeah, I, it I just mean, was completely unexpected we, I mean we knew we were going back to Talos 4 um, and we were all curious about how it was going to tie in, if at all, to the you know to the cage, and uh, if there was going to be any like major and throwbacks. They went, to it. they and went all the way with the, yeah. You know the the only thing that kind of bothered me is how Vina seemed to be familiar with Spock, because there was really no interaction between those two characters in the cage. Mm. But thing is, the Telosian had access to Pike's mind. Three years ago, well, three mm. years ago, or fifty-four years ago, depending on how you see it, but uh, they, they had access to his mind, and they provided her with a facsimile, so she probably discovered Spock through those, through living, through Pike's memories. We can, you know, mm. that's my only kind of gripe, canon-wise, with that whole, th- um. Is like how Spock seemed to be important in Vina's eyes when she like never met him. Well, I think she saw him once, like when they thought they were refugees, and mm. then they were none. But that's basically the only time she's ever seen him in real life. Whatever that means, the Untalus Four. But yeah, but so no, I, I think it, it was incredibly well done. Um, I mean, I was, uh, I, the, the, you know, thing is, they, uh, I, I'm glad to they, they brought on Vita, and I, I'm glad that uh, I, I've read it somewhere, but um, I, I'm gonna uh, 
rip, repeat the sentiment is like I'm glad she wasn't included in the promo pictures. Like we didn't yes. get that we we got that surprise. Not like two weeks ago when we kn we saw in, in the promo pictures that like Culber like was there and mm. since like since a year ago we knew that they would be they promised that he'd come back. Mm. And then we because we kind of guessed you know from the previous episode that we'd get there and eventually that's how they would get there you know um, it's not that hard but I mean to to see the picture is like yeah. but the thing is they kind of saved it on how they saved him but it was still kind of you know kind of weird to to spoil the surprise but for Vina surprise was there and I'm glad and she played it very well and um, the makeup for the Talusians was spot on. I mean, pe there's a lot of people who didn't like their nose ridge and were looking to the actual butt head. But <laughs> <laughs> oh my you God, said that last week, did you? You were like, oh yeah, I wonder if when they turn around there, there'll be a butt at the back of the head. I, I, honestly, I didn't actually pay attention to me, that. Me neither. I didn't pay attention to that. I was just glad to see the kind of metallic uniform. You had the medallion on the, on the keeper. Mm -hmm. uh, like, the just the way they they created the illusion and when the shuttle approached i i honestly i i kind of jumped a little bit I, but then it, when you had spock like punching ahead i said okay yeah it's an you know you, mm -hmm. if you know what you're getting into then you can as a viewer you, you can see through the illusion as well as spock and it's, it's kind of fun you know Because you have you have Burnham there. It's like, oh, we're going to the black hole, and she she clearly is not aware of what she's going into. And mm. and honestly, the the just a black hole. The the special effect and how it's modeled was well. I think it looked pretty realistic. First of all, I think probably one of the most realistic depiction of a black hole, uh, and uh, and looked look great. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it big throw, sort of like to Interstellar. I thought it looked kind yeah. of very interstellary. Um, but yeah, I mean, other things like take away from the episode. There was uh, obviously the musical plants. Well, the whole audio, like all the audio engineering in that episode, there were so many like SFX, uh, like sound effects callbacks to the original like you even had like if you pay attention at the end when when they beam back um when the the section 31 ship beams uh spocks and Sp spock and burnham you hear like the original the like the cage mm. transporter effect so yep. i think and honestly that's something they played with throughout discovery and i think the mentality is we if we can't use you know props and special effects from the original series well you know we're we're gonna go at least in in the audio department where it's not as uh as dated you know there's some sounds that can kind of feel odd but to the uh to the star trek fan it, it will still please the the auditory canals <laughs> yeah i mean even in like the vulcan hello and battle of binary stars there was very much um throwbacks to pretty much all yeah um had sound effects from tos um TNG. you had a lot from tng uh, a few from ds9 uh, a lot from voyager um you know like uh the door the time of, uh, yeah everything like that. so i mean it's there's a lot of homages to uh all of the series really you know it's it's not just mm -hmm. you know specifically and that's that's something they can relatively get away relatively unscathed i mean some people will still complain now oh, that's a sound from voyager but who's to know if it wasn't voyager that's not using a sound from tos you know for for from mm. from that era of of that universe but i mean a sound's a sound at this point <laughs> um As long as they don't use the, uh, you know, the mechanical computer sounds like <laughs> with the cards and all, I'm good. And I, the don't go that far. Printers. Don't go that far. 
Yeah, can you imagine it um, if they were printing <laughs> off something or like you know handing out bits of paper or whatever? It all come yeah. off a dot matrix printer. I mean, the thing yeah. is with discovery, and a lot of people don't seem to understand, is it, it's not so much it's too far fetched, you know, too technically advanced for you know um, for like TOS in comparison. It's pretty much building on what we've we, we've got today. I mean, yeah. there are places in Japan and stuff like that that have holograms. Um, so it's not too far fetched to think that transparent, they, you know, we'll have... transparent. I uh, mentioned in the past, transparent televisions are a thing. Yeah, actually, very few in the world. There, I think it's LG who's working on those. And uh... yeah, I mean, so it, it's not so much that it's too advanced. It's it's more a case of you know, even taking into account what there is in TNG and DS9 and stuff like that now. Uh, 2019 technology that we're ahead of it now i mean mm. pads for us we've got ipads and you know yeah and stuff like I, that. Mean, so, I mean y- it's you look at something you know in tng we're like tng ds9 voyager i had like it would not be uncommon to see like the captain with like 34 pads <laughs> like on their desk mm. you don't see like 34 ipads on my desk like even if I had a tablet, I don't have one. But, like, even even the thing, like, even tablets now are kind of thing of the past now. Like, there's only, like, moms, I think, that have those. <laughs> well, like, even, you... I mean, the tablet I've got is a Nexus 2013. Yeah. I don't use a tablet. I, it's all on my phone. It's literally, if I want to do something, then I'll either use my computer or my phone. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I, my phone is pretty much my go-to for everything unless I want to do like something yeah. like the website or you know but, Word yeah. documents and that sort of thing. But it's literally all on my phone, and my phone is like what smaller than the smallest pad that you see in Star Trek. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, and it's not, it's not even a question of sizes; it's also just a question of why would you have thirty-two iPads on your desk? You can just have all the files, and, and there's also the concept of the cloud that wasn't even thought mm. of, even even in the nineties, you know, uh, where you could access all your data from one device. I mean, you got you got to remember. I mean, TNG when when they started out, like floppy disks were still a thing, <laughs> and that's TNG. Oh, bless, I remember them. I mean. And they, the scripts were probably that they still were still written probably in in uh, uh, there's a it's called WordStar, and it's a DOS program that actually a lot of sci-fi writers still kind of use to this day. Uh, Robert J. Sawyer, um, he actually he wrote the final episode for um, uh, Star Trek Continues, and um, he's a great Canadian sci-fi author, and he only writes. On Word Star, because uh-huh. and it, it, it's a thing. It's a writer's thing, and the only the, the thing he says is, a well that that's what he uses, and b he doesn't get distracted by thirty four other programs and YouTube and whatever on the phone. Uh-huh. And I think, and I'm I'm, I'm digressing here, but uh, <laughs> I, if 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 God, if there's that's a old, th- isn't it? that's like proper, yeah. yeah. But but I think if Star Trek would come back to having multiple devices, it would be simply just to not get diverted di- any any diversions from other programs and all. And then there's a fad in the twenty three, uh, twenty three thirties, something like that. That uh, uh, let's since we can replicate everything, let's just make sure every pad is a single use for a single document. That way, you can concentrate on just one document. You know, that's my, kind of my retcon on how come Starfleet went from cloud. It, it might be like security. Like, let's have this document only on this pad and not synced with anything else for security reasons because we get hacked by SQL injections all the time. All the, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit. Hmm. That, but then know, used to say that, you know, that further down the line that it's not. I mean, something still used. I mean. Yeah, I mean, SQL is it's still just a database, you know. And the thing is, they used SQL, and it's uh, and just a little because um, for those who didn't know, this the last week in Discovery, they got hacked. 
through a SQL flaw or SQL, uh, you know, uh, whatever. And SQL stands for Standard uh, Structured Quer Query Language, which is pretty vague. I mean, as a description, yes, right now in these days, it's a proprietary format. But who's to say that in a few hundred years down the line, Microsoft will not just put that in the open source and then be so, you know, modified uh, mm. that it's still in use in the future. As who's to as say they... that it's not? Yeah, I mean, who's to say that it doesn't stand for? What did you say it stands for again? Uh Right now, it stands for Structured Query Language, which is... Yeah, you know, so database. who's to say that the query doesn't stand for quantum? There you go. Quantum everything. It's kind of like time. You use it as a modifier in a verb, and it sounds really cool. <laughs> uh, so true. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, quantum yes, torpedoes it was... Quantum sounds better than photon torpedoes, so oh, I yeah. guess... Even though it makes of... no sense to have quantum... What, what does it quantically do? Like... You have like it explodes and it doesn't explode at the same time, or you know. I think I can't remember exactly. I read that somewhere. I think it's supposed to oh, be yeah. like twice, uh, four times the power or something. Yeah. They, they I'm sure I'll have thing is, new, like you probably had new. like a script writer somewhere said, "Oh, we need some new kind of torpedo. Let's do it." When we had photon, let's do quantum, and then you had the science guy in the back. Okay, now we're gonna deal with this shit. That, that's I feel like usually how they go. But I think it was explained in the... Uh, I have the DS9 tech manual, and it was mm. explained in there. But it's like, I'm pretty sure, you know, it's science, you know, story first, science second. So usually the the science analysts or science consultants usually just pick up the slacks from the writers. That's usually how it always went down. Um, but yeah, so According to Memory to Alpha, it uses a plasma warhead. Still doesn't really mean much to yeah. me. <laughs> uh, Why is not plasma torpedo? Uh, rapid energy it extraction plasma from zero plasma point vacuum. Plasma torpedoes, then you know. So. Uh, but we're so digressing right now. We need to. We so are. We really need to bring back on track. Right. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. So the SQL thing was a little bit too on the nose, but it was still fun for uh, anyone who works in IT. Mm. Um. Otherwise, so so let's go back to Telosion. So the makeup was good. Uh, they weren't there was a, there weren't any illusion shenanigans other than really just the black hole thing. And yeah. I think, well, there wasn't any need for it in the story. Uh, they played a little bit with Burnham, like with Davina, like how she appeared in one place and another after she transported. But other than that, um, I think that Telosians didn't need any illusion shenanigans i mean no i mean um i read on a post on facebook um that someone said that they were uh, kind of merciful which yeah. i guess you know considering how they were depicted in the cage they kind of were but they still you know wanted their pound of flesh didn't they for yeah. helping they still wanted to know exactly what and caused the and i still issue. feel like cuz the way vina talk to pike is like she she's not man, maybe not manipulate but she's putting it out there that you know if you want to come back you know she's setting the ground for the menagerie basically yeah i still kind of wish and, that that wasn't where we were heading but yeah uh but yeah still no news on like that famous like death sentence like thing if you go and tell us for yeah like, um, it's restricted area. That's fine, but there's like no general order seven. So, hopefully, we'll see that by the end of the season. They might come back to Talos Four for some reason or not, mm. or they, or they just might decide to piss off someone and just do that out of spite. <laughs> I don't know. Because if you, because one thing I realized I'm watching the, the, the menagerie is, um, it's uh. Like, because in the document that Carmen Mendez opens, like it says, uh, the the document like saying the Enterprise is the Talos Four and Sunshine, blah, blah blah. It's like a Captain Pike and half human officer, science officer Spock. Mm. So that kind of 
puts in the possibility that there's something between Pike and Spock that happened on that uh, that happened later or is part of what happened in this episode that later brings it for General Order 7. We'll see. Uh, it's possible. Yeah. Be interesting to find I, out. I still feel like because the way Spock acted in the menagerie, there's like they because if you really just go from what you've seen in the cage and in the menagerie foregoing anything in Discovery, there was no motivation from Spock. There's no like it I, I still can't find out the why and it seems really premeditated. Like he had a plan. There was a a kicker that engaged, you know, the procedure and it sounds like, you know, to me having something with delusions in discovery and probably him striking a deal to bring pike back whenever he would be if he ever would be in a in a state that uh you know they mm. could you know you know he would not be whatever something you know basically if x happens then bring pike to here so i feel like something like that happened and i really would want to see that happen like how you know spock secretly negotiated with the Telusians uh for pike's uh you know oh or maybe maybe he had a future because you know because here here i i got something he had vision as a future when he melded with that ren angel thing mm. he probably would have seen there's a possibility that he saw pike disabled you know and Possibly. the Talusians yeah. would have seen that too in when they relive the memory so because it wasn't shown on the screen this episode doesn't mean it didn't happen and there's still a lot of leeway to, to be had so like my so I, I would see the fact that they, the Talusians see in Spock's memory that there's a reference to Pike being disabled somehow and then they say like okay well <laughs> How about we let you, we we allow you to use us to, you know, to to retrieve your sanity, and to bring those memories out to make sense from them, but in the future you'll have to bring Pike. You know, I think that would have made a lot more sense as a motivation, than wanting to see the breaking point between Burnham and Spock. Mm. I mean, it's still. It, I, don't don't mind me. I, I I liked seeing it, but from the Talusians' point of view, I don't know. I don't see how or why they would care so much about knowing why they lost their you know friendship as as uh, you know the their brotherhood and sisterhood. Um. So yeah, that that would have made a lot more sense to me than. But thing is, as an audience, we, but you know, the way they shot that scene where it would young, young Spock and young Burnham and then adult Spock and the way they shifted a really, um, played well with, uh, the emotions and the scene was really well done. Um, and you felt, you know, I, I honestly felt the words hit me because, um, mm. as some, you know, we, we, I, I, as someone who was bullied when I was younger, I felt those words. And the thing is, it always hurts so much more when it comes from someone you trust and love. And people will say, oh, it's just words. It was like sister siblings do that. You know, but the thing is, you have to realize how fragile Spock was when he was a child and um, how uncertain of his identity he was. I think there's probably something um uh you know i would see because y you see him wanting as a kid wanting to explore his humanity but to see burnham close that door in his face so hard i think that's what pushed him to be f you know to act and be a full vulcan and, yeah and i and i also think it's kind of it kind of laid the clown the clown work the groundwork 
for why he acted certainly, you know, in certain ways um, in certain episodes as well. You yeah. know, a little bit more reserved and that sort of thing. Yeah, it, it kind of makes sense. But uh, I think for me, it was more along the lines of shock. Yeah. You know, we all knew that you know, some, he, she did something, but... I mean, we, ex- we all expected like, the worst, like, I don't know, she broke his leg or it was a sexual <laughs> encounter somehow. Or well, yeah, or killed his puppy. <laughs> I killed your puppy. I, um, I killed him and ate him. Yeah, that would be kind of bad. <laughs> um, but as far as I can kind of understand it resonating with some people. I mean, I, I guess it's like personal experience, isn't it? I mean, mm-hmm. I, I wasn't necessarily bullied. Um, I guess I'm lucky in that sense uh, when I was a kid um, so it didn't hit me there I think it was more along the lines of it, it hit me more for the sense that it was not as bad as I thought it was going to mm. be does that make sense and yeah, you know, yeah, I thought yeah. it was like, you know, but I mean that's the beauty of you know storytelling, isn't it? I mean, it hits people differently and interacts with people differently. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, because it would not hurt you doesn't mean it would not hurt someone else. Yeah, exactly, and that, that's one of the beauty, beautiful things. Not so yeah. much about storytelling, but more about the about Star Trek as a whole. It's the fact that you know it resonates differently with everyone. And everyone will see mm-hmm. things that others don't. I mean, like the whole. PTSD thing for Culver. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see where they go with that. Um, because it's, to me, it's more along the lines of if they don't do it very, very carefully, if, and if they continue to do what they did this week, it was more like you just seemed angry. And mm. you, I kind of get it because it was angry for the whole, he didn't really get, you know, he doesn't get who he is anymore, which fair enough you know you've been reborn and you know in sense of loss and you know that sort of thing but to me it just seemed like he was angry you know there yeah. was no no depth um, to it but no i i i see what i see where you go i think uh they really focus on the anger towards uh ash and valk in this mm. episode um but there's still a bit of body dis- i think we would call it body dysphagia i think it would be somehow a proper term um where it's akin of of you know i would say like i have no 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 knowledge of how it feels to be transsexual but it, you know fe- you know feeling like a stranger in your own body is something that's often mentioned mm. from someone who who went through that process of before they you know from before they engage in that process and us it kind of feels like it feels like Calber is going through that but like with not not with his sexual um identity but with his whole body you know mm. and maybe a bit of his persona like cuz he said like cuz when when um Stamet said like we know who you are but then, you know, I think if I remember correctly, uh, if memory serves, <laughs> um, you, you have Calber replying, right? I don't know who, you know, because like he doesn't know anymore. Mm. He has he has the memories kind of, you know, and, it, it, you know, one thing that really intrigued me is how you had that confrontation between Ash and, and Calber. And at the one point you realize they're both going to the same thing. They're at different stages, but they're both going through something similar. And I would find that really interesting. If eventually they would bond over that. It's possible, yeah. I mean, people who have PTSD kind of shy away from things like that. I mean, mm-hmm. it depends on, you know, what type of PTSD, PTSD you've got, because mm-hmm. there's so many different types. But... Uh, you tend to be more withdrawn than someone who engages openly yeah. with things. And, and, and but I mean, I'm just, you, yeah. I'm just very curious about how they're going to do it because they've only got what four, five, five episodes left. 
Um, oh, and that's obviously, you know, if they wrap it up this series, I mean, it could go well into series three. Um, but mm. uh, kind of, I'm just well, curious we, about it. I have, yeah. a good, I have a good hope that we'll keep seeing them in series three. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, no, no, no. I just mean, you know, whether they're going to draw this storyline out in series oh, three yeah. or whether it's going to be, you know... You know um, maybe not as heightened as it is now, but it might, might just, like, follow up on that. I think it's going to die down a little bit, and but it might something he has to go through, and you know, slowly but surely, because you can't you, you can't resolve something like that um, humanely and he, possibly in just like a few days, it takes months, years, even if he can ever come back fully from that. Yeah, I mean, PTSD is something you suffer from for the rest of your life. There is no cure for it, so. But, it, it yeah. will be there, but I'm just... I don't know. Um, we're only in the first stages, really, aren't we? I mean, mm -hmm. it's not something that they've... Um, kind of touched on more. Than... <laughs> yeah, there, there's so much... Uh, thing is, yeah, as I said, we, we, I, I'd like to have um, someone who's... Like, have someone who's been affected by PTSD and have someone who's lived through... Uh, a transsexual being transsexual and going through uh, transformation to have their I think they would have very interesting viewpoints on, on, mm. on what both Ash and Calber are going through and uh, so I think it's probably going to speak more to those people than probably you and I because honestly yeah I mean cause, uh, even though I, you know I have and I do suffer from, you know, for like mental illness and stuff. It's, mm -hmm. it's completely different. Uh, you know, there's, there's no real way that I could understand. Because um, mm. um, I've personally been, can. yeah. Because I've been in in in, in Stamets position, personally. I mean, I've been in relationships where my my other half would be in very state of. Men, you know, crisis, psychological crisis, and you feel so unable to help. You feel unpowered, and you feel like unable to help. It's, it's, and all you want to do is, you know, grab them and say, "Hey, you're here. You're with me. You're, you're doing good. You don't have to worry." But for for the other for for, for the other person, it it doesn't register. I mean, you have you have Stamets telling. Culber saying, "Hey, you're here. You're you're back from the dead. We brought you back. You should be happy about that. I am happy about that. We're back together. And I feel honestly, I think as I mean, I don't want to say regular people, but I think as non non distressed people, I think we probably feel more for our Stamus than Culber." But I honestly feel like people uh, who have had to go through difficult issues in their lives will probably feel for uh, relate, not 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 feel, because we both feel we feel for both of them. But I, I think relate is probably the better term. Uh, we'll probably relate more to 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 Culber, and that's something that's great. I mean, I think. They they prove they show they're showing two points of view that are equally relatable, mm -hmm. and honestly, because we and and then you know you have all the shippers now saying, that, please don't don't kill Colmets, don't kill our our favorite couple, um, and I honestly hope that they're built they're able to 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 bring it back. And honestly, from the you know the little bit of conversation the boat they both had in the in in the, in, in the cafeteria, well before the big fight, I mean there there seemed to be uh, hope. I mean they were able to talk after the the in, you know the the incident in the quarters. Um, I think it's just a a very bad phase, and I think Stamets will have to learn to. You raise himself a little bit from from the relationship and allow, and just allow Colbert to discover who he is. Mm. And it's that old, you know. It let him go, and if they come back, you know, they're yours. And I think it's going to be something like that. He's going to have to let 
Carl Burgo, rediscover who he is, and then there's going to be the the coming back. But I think probably the overbearing Stamets doesn't help the situ- the situation right now. And boy, oh boy, do I wish they had a counselor on board. <laughs> <laughs> Paging Where's Deanna Troy, Troy when you need her? There you go. Troy, paging Deanna yeah. Troy. Um, it'd be interesting as well to see um, if Cornwell has yeah. any take on Because, yeah, I mean, she's... Could... Yeah, she was a psychologist, so she has yeah. she has a background to help with that. So, but honestly, I feel like uh, it's gonna be somehow Ash Tyler that helps Culber. I think I, I honestly believe they'll go in, they're gonna go in that direction where the it's gonna be the the awkward. Well, yeah, I killed you, but I did kind of didn't kill you. Also, but here's my experience and how not how me not being me and uh, yeah it's gonna be I, I feel like it's gonna be the kind of bonding the kind of strange bonding that that's gonna help Calbert but that's my theory and I stick to it let's be besties yeah <laughs> that's what it be. let's be best friends <laughs> um so yeah so moving on so Giorgio's motivations in section 41 yeah I'm um, really intrigued just you know because She's up to something, but what? Yeah, I mean, she clearly wants to see Leland gone or disgraced and take his place. As to why, I think, as a Terran, she probably just wants the power just because she wants the power. Mm. Um, it's, you know. Um, but she seems hell-bent on helping Burnham, which yeah, is something that I'm a little bit... Hmm. You know, is there... Why? You know, mm. is there something that we're not obviously privy to yet? Because obviously we're only on episode, what, nine this week? Yeah. Um, so I'm a little bit like, hmm. Honestly, I think it's probably just, you know, she still sees her adoptive daughter in there. And, uh, you know, kind of like, I mean, kind of like how, uh, how um, Burnham couldn't let go of of Giorgio in the Murray universe. I think Giorgio cannot let go of I think she probably feels th- you know she she might be somehow thankful for Burnham saving her even though she kind of resents uh being mm. in the in 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 the good universe, but you know she probably is glad to be kind of still alive. So that's great. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you got to see the <clears throat> yeah, I mean there is that. Um I'm also wondering whether you know she's part of the reason why section 31 goes underground. Maybe, yeah. I mean, well, first of all, they clearly she clearly gave some Terran tech to section 31. So that might put them in trouble when that comes into mm-hmm. light. And other thing that I found interesting is cuz uh, we we mentioned in the past but uh, they keep mentioning control, which is the uh, uh, the um, kind of asset. Uh, how do they call that? The the danger asset calculator. Well, basically, you know, it's a giant calculator that calculates risks and all. Um, hmm. I think, honestly, that probably, from what I, I I understand, that links to that whole future history thing. I feel like it's gonna go Skynet. Do like, you? Yeah. Because I read a very interesting theory today that, because mm-hmm. um, we've not, apart from that one episode, um, we've not really established anything, you know, the, the fallout of Saru's people evolving. Um, mm-hmm. I read a very interesting theory today. Um, Screen rent, I think it was on. Oh, about screen how, rent, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, but it, it, you know, it's part and parcel, isn't it? Like, you kind of like read, you know, theories and stuff mm. like that. But apparently, they have a theory that it's the um, Kelpians. Okay, maybe. Um, but I mean, thing is that the thing was clearly non-organic, because if you remember, Spock says. Um, 
that it's after all sentient life. Mm. So I really But, feel that's going to be a synthetic AI, kind of like, you know, Mass Effect kind of thing, you know. Uh, I think, yeah, it's either going to go Skynet or Mass Effect kind of, uh, you know, like... Uh, I feel like... I read this. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> But, <laughs> But yeah. then I love Mass Effect, so, you know... Yeah, it's... I mean, I actually... I'm one of the few who doesn't mind like the end of the third one, even before they they decided to put that giant patch to explain away everything just to please the fans. Yeah, you see, I hated the ending until they patched it. Ah, uh, but to me, to so we're digressing, but I want to establish the the fact that people expected the end for for you know all their choices to matter in the end. But all their choices mattered in the third game, which is what just just a th I see the third game as the end, not just the mm. final cutscene, and that's how I I I I, I viewed it. Because as as a an um, interactive medium, you you can't possibly have an ending that will fit all the thousands or hundreds of permutations possible that the players will, you know. But again, yeah, I mean that's another reason why, believe it or not, that Star Trek Online, your um, captain, mm -hmm. um, doesn't have a voice. There was, I remember reading, years and years and years ago, um, a reason why that they never put a voice actor to your character's name, um, not only because the sheer amount of dialogue, but more along the lines of um, because it would never appease people. Mm. You know, they would not be happy with the character voice and stuff like that. So I get what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so so I feel like, because especially given how what we're going to see next week, I've seen the preview for next week's episode, and I really keep feeling that because they they kept mentioning control every time we've seen section thirty one. So I think them hitting that note every time we see section thirty one, they're really establishing something. Mm. So, and I think it's going to be that, you know, age-old AI goes haywire kind of thing. And uh, so, yeah, you have my prediction. No, I don't think in the history of Star Trek there's been anything with artificial intelligence. I mean, you had Viger and you had the Changeling. Yeah. You had the uh, uh, Nomad, which I always known as Dickbot. On the, and because uh, the guy from um, uh, Swear Trek, he made uh, an account. Uh, well, it started from a, a, a GIF he made saying like "dick bot," and you had like, and then it kind of went way overboard, and he started uh, a separate account just for "dick bot" because it was something you know he would like mention your mom and something. I was I was doing your mom and something, and he. Look it up. It's uh, at Digbot two thousand, I think. It's you know, I think the kind of the kind of humor you and I enjoy, anyway. Um, but yeah. <laughs> but I mean, and uh, oh yeah, and if you remember in TNG, you had the Exocomps. Um, yeah, um, and then you had oh, what was you had, had like the, the that Warhead. droid Not, thing in in, uh, in in Voyager. Like, uh, yeah, the one where. Um... The bomb takes over the doctor. I can't remember yeah, the yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, there's that. Yeah, that one is that one also. But I'm especially thinking about like you had uh, Torres who found like an android in in the Delta Quadrant. Uh, yeah, Dreadnought also is is another one. But yeah, so so there are multiple instances of of AI going haywire. But I just it just never went to that scale. Or there may be that Viger. Viger, sorry, but yeah. <laughs> That so many people are like, yeah, think it's the origins of the Borg. And um, today alone, actually, that I've had to kind of remind people that uh, Voyager episode Dragon's Teeth establishes the um, fact that the Borg are like almost a thousand years old by the mm -hmm. time of Voyager. So, yeah, but then again, the whole you know, Voyager thing kind of doesn't pan out when you look at it that way. But never mind. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we've also found out this week as well that the Red Angel is human. Yeah. Um, so, again, that that shortens the list. It could. I know. I'm. I'm saying. Even though the form was kind of feminine, and I, 
it did Spock. I think he he said she when talking about the Red Angel. I have I have to look it but look it up again. But I read that. Uh... I just thought he said um, he sensed human emotions. Okay, well I'll have because someone online said like that he referred to it as a she. Okay. We'll have to look it up again with closer attention this time. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much. I mean, we have Arium that's going to go haywire next week. Yeah. Spoilers. Uh, and uh, yeah, are we not wonder whether it it means that they're going to write her out or whether she's going to turn into like the big bad for like the rest yeah. of the series. I think yeah. uh, she's pro- you know the number of times that Data went haywire and he remained on board. I mean, Arian can go haywire, and she they can just clean, clean her up, and go. You know, here here's put Norton antivirus on. <laughs> Wipe, you know. Norton yeah. antivirus, the worst antivirus <laughs> there is. I mean, it could be McAfee. Yeah, there's that or Windows Defender. No, Windows Defender is actually quite good. Also, really? it's free, and it's part of your OS, so you don't feel as as much as as those added. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I know. Restore backup on Arium, and there you go. Boom. Um, there are ways. <laughs> there are ways. I mean, I don't count it as gone. You know, we'll, we'll see how that develops. Uh, but yeah, and honestly, and one point I wanted to bring is also uh, uh, how Ash Tyler is really getting shit on this week. Like he's yeah. he's getting like he's getting all the suspicion because they they seen. The transmissions, because we as an audience know that Ariam is probably the one who sent those terraquads of information. Um, but I don't know. I mean, that's. I mean, there hasn't been any tells this year, has there? I mean, yeah, but I mean, the subtext is there. I mean, you had the red flashing eyes, and and you know, it's not hard to put one in one, and you know. It is Ariam who who did that, and she she is the one who sabotaged the, because she's the spore drive operator. So if someone's mm. gonna crash the the spore drive, <laughs> it's gonna be her. So I don't know. I just we'll see. But you know, last I year would... where because the, there was you know there's some quite obvious twists and turns coming on, and you know this year that it's been very yeah. But it's not I mean, I, those the the twists that are telegraphed this year i mean you see them coming but then there's always a a, a further twist you mm. know um so like like we saw the delusions two weeks we saw the delusions two weeks ago but then we saw vena and then we saw how you know and and the black hole thing and and they they still managed to play without expect with our expectations um mm. and the issues with last years were really because people were looking a little bit too hard on on IMDb to trying to find who played Vok, and that kind of mm. spoiled the thing. And you had also last year you had you had um, Jonathan Frick say, "Oh yeah, we're going to the mirror universe," and that kind of spoiled the whole thing. Also, <laughs> I mean, loose lips sink ships. There you go. But yeah, so so poor poor Ash Tyler. I think he's really a victim here. Due to his position with Section Thirty One, but his 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 loyalties are clearly in jeopardy because he clearly puts the Burnham first mm. before Section Thirty One, you know. And I'm not sure how Discovery fits in between those two. That's a, that's the only kind of muddy point is if Burnham's out of picture, where does the Discovery fit in relation with Section Thirty One with Tyler, like is he well, clearly really, he he clearly is like the Luke Skywalker who sees good in Darth Vader kind of thing, you know. I had that, I had that feeling when he talked about uh, Section Thirty One this week. Like, oh, there's still good in them. I can feel it, you know. Yeah. Um. So he's so so. Be yeah, interesting to see how they develop Section Thirty One. To be honest with you, and see yeah. if they, you know, they do flush it out a bit more or they do turn it into like 
the evil empire sort of thing side of uh, stuff. I think, I think there's going to be some kind of dismantlement and they're going to go on the ground and then we're going we're going to go into what we knew uh in DS9. Yeah, cuz um, the the producers are clearly aware of what they're doing. I mean, Kurtzman said in interviews like how we go from there to here is what we but you know, how come they went there in the first place mm. is also another story I would like to have s explained sometime, but that would be the place for a comic or a novel, I think, at this point. Because that, that's clearly the area where the authors have the most fun, is explaining away things from outside, you know, without going... You know, um, the only disadvantage of that though is because it's not done on screen, it's not official. Yeah. So which means it can be like retconned at any time. So it, it just kind of. Well, like... I mean, it still adds to our head canon and then adds to further debates online when you're going on Twitter and said, "Oh, blah 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 blah," and then that's not canon, and they say, "Well, it's kind of is, but until like, uh, you know." <laughs> Come on, that's 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 eighty. That's eighty-five percent of of. Of our day is these these. these. Well, arguing with people who think they know better than everyone else. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I, it's not yeah. as bad. Uh, these the, the last few weeks hasn't been as bad though. I mean, thing is, the haters like the the usual suspects, the Midnight's Edge and folks, also focused on hating on Miss Marvel. They forgot about Star Trek Discovery, mm. so that's good for us. <laughs> and honestly, I mean, it never it, really bothered me in the first place. It was more, it, it kind of got to the point where I was doing it more for winding them up than anything else. Oh, yeah. So, and, you know, the whole, um, when Stig got renewed for Series 3, the meltdown, oh. it was just like, it was comedy gold. Yeah. It really was. I mean, you know, they're, 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 they're going to, what, what is this? Like, they're renewing it just to piss us off. Piss us off. Like yeah, yeah really. Just, you you really you really think you matter that much? No, you don't. <laughs> you know you don't. Anyway, um, I think we've covered everything this week, haven't Pretty we? Much, um, yeah. Before we start going off in tangent again, um, I'm just trying to think. We've done the Trek news. There really wasn't yeah. any. Um, covered what we think George might be up to. We've mm -hmm. touched on the PTSD thing, which I still hope that they do justice to that which i'm sure they will uh, yeah but, you know um spock and Talosians, at... we've touched on that yeah uh red angel theories and the other one was a return to talus four and the cave you know yeah. versus the cage and how it's you didn't really see much i mean obviously you know we've got the yeah just the, the... grand the grander scale sets which obviously aren't sets because they were shooting on location and stuff um some kind of quarry around toronto mm. or you know i you know if they would be in the uk it'd be the doctor who quarry but <laughs> just trying uh, to think where the doctor who quarry well it's basically like every episode of doctor who back in the 60s and 70s like they'd be that one quarry where they film like all the alien planets it kind of became a running gag. To be fair, I'd, um, it's all shot in Cardiff now. Um, yeah. So I'm guessing it I'd wouldn't just be the have same. a bunch of Welsh. Welsh. <laughs> Not sheep bobbing along. <laughs> <laughs> Although anyway, they, did, they, uh, they did play with the Welsh thing for a bit. That was funny. But is yeah, that's something else. Uh, Apart from there, I mean, there were some nice throwbacks. Um, you know, yeah. everything. Apart from like the update of everything, everything looked like Talos Four. You know, it didn't mm. scream. You know, oh yeah, they've done this, they've done that, they've done this, they've oh, done no, that. It really you know, felt like a planet going. Uh, you know, in the aftermath of a nuclear war. You know, I mean, the the, the kind of stale water, and you had like the the rocks and the and the, and the singing plants, and that's basically Talos Four. That's all you need for Talos Four. Yeah. Rock and blue plants. <laughs> got it. I mean, you got it. I'm, I'm just sorry. You even have the Spock me. smile, which yeah, was a kind yeah. of a nice throwback as well, because um, 
he smiled in the cage mm -hmm. and uh, and we and thing is if you look at it we almost threw all the clips that we've seen in uh from what we've seen in the season two uh trailer there's still i think one clip of spock talking with admiral cornwell that we hasn't seen yet but i think we've almost gone through all the clips yeah uh, that because honestly i was surprised because last because for season one the the, the premiere uh, like the 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 trailers for season one were mo just episode one and two but this year i mean we're, we're going up to 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 scenes that were filmed in episode 10 from, mm. from for that that trailer so i mean they they, they had yeah they, and yet they kind of off felt like it could be in the same two or three episodes so that was really it, it's a it's a credit to to those who put that trailer together just means that we're in for some surprises now because obviously yeah. we haven't seen any unless obviously they drop another trailer which they might do <laughs> um for like you know like what's to come yeah for like that. obviously well, we're, we're, we're basically in a break are we um yeah, if i remember rightly to, yeah, we're going through the second half right now. We started yeah. the second half. So, I mean, we yeah we we have that 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 conversation between Spock and Cornwell where he says like all sentient life and stuff like that really dramatic. All life in the universe will be destroyed, <laughs> or maybe you just will the galaxy, die. or maybe just the galaxy. If you know, if you know, we're, we're being uh, reasonable, but uh, yeah. So so yeah. Okay. <laughs> so surprises ahead. I mean, th there was this thread on Reddit that I was really curious about. I linked to it to you, to you like uh, last week. Like the guy who has supposedly like uh, inside information. That... Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, there is still some interesting tidbits in there. Hopefully, you know, thing is it it's a nice change from what we from the doom and gloom kind of news because it's all yay kind of good happy news uh basically like there was this uh let me try and retrieve it uh, no it was on trek bbs yeah sorry just hold on uh let's see if i can find it trek bbs yeah there you go so so i mean we can do a little rundown and see how uh so the discovery may so there's a few technical bits and there's a few uh one of the bridge transparent displays are real and cost seventeen thousand dollars each. That's believable, from what I've. Uh, transporter room is the least favorite shoot, as you can only fit the camera in two angles. Again, you know, thing is, uh, you'll look at uh, you go see it's in uh, Trek BBS. It's called first hand behind the scenes information, and then you you go a little further down. It says that. Uh, uh, they're basically, um, they've built out the set for the Enterprise Bridge, which I find really yeah, interesting. Yeah, I'm not, although I remember an interview that, um, the new number one did, mm -hmm. Rebecca Rom Romjen, Rom yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I suck at pronouncing people's names. Um, she did say that... Well, basically, she mentioned there was a bridge that we've not seen yet. Okay, so it might be it. So, yeah. Um, and because uh, they said, I'm just trying to think. I think it was on StarTrek.com actually. Yeah. Let's see if I can find it. Um, she basically was asked if there was anything that uh, she couldn't tell us about. Mm. Uh, yeah, because I have a feeling, like, in the last few episodes, you have, because right now. The, the the discovery is now a renegade ship, so I feel like it's gonna go kind of like Star Trek Six, where you have the Enterprise. Oh, it's gonna be kind of like the reverse of of Star Trek Six, where the Enterprise is kind of in the place of the Excelsior, which is kind of a legit ship who has who was in the you know on a good side of the law, but it's gonna help Discovery. So mm. I. I kind of ex semi expect the Enterprise to show up again, maybe not next episode, but maybe two or three episodes down the line, 
kind of showing up to save the day kind of thing. You know, the last uh, 30 seconds of the last episode. Uh, (laughs) But, you know, maybe maybe not that, that, you know, kind of maybe in a... I have it because I I kind of expected it. Like at the end of the episode this week, I kind of felt like is is the Enterprise going to show up and and get him out of the air or something? Um, but no. But yeah, I I I, I kind of feel like uh, we're, we're, you know we'll see the Enterprise. Yeah, I I, I I'm growing more and more confident that we'll see the Enterprise Bridge this year. I hope so, and I kind of hope that um they might announce <laughs> that that spin-off show that we we really want which is the pike and the pike and pike uh number one in spock show yeah i mean um, I, at this point i i'll take whatever i can get in star trek uh, uh maybe it wasn't on star trek.com then I swear I, you know, I swear I read something about. Um, you can, li- you, you know, you can link it later on. But yeah, so yeah. look it up. I mean, the thing is, it's relatively credible. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Because... Here, I lost my mom two years ago, so being on that set, specifically the set I was on, which I'm not allowed to talk about, made me cry, and it made me think about my mum a lot. Basically, she's saying that as a Star Trek fan, as a child, she watched the original series with her mum. She lost her mum two years ago, yeah. and being so being on this set specifically the set I was on, which I'm not allowed to talk about, made me cry. Mm-hmm. So uh-huh. it's, it's kind of like, you know... Mm-hmm. So it's possible. <laughs> um, it'd be very interesting to see. So, so yeah. So, That's so, kind of like a big giveaway there in itself, isn't it? Especially considering it's on StarTrek.com as well. It's kind yeah, of I mean, like a big... The thing is, like, the info in the post is all stuff that could easily be deduced from information we already have. Yeah. But the thing is, it adds a little bit of details. It kind of adds a layer on top of the details that we already know. So, we'll see. But, as I said, it's nice to see rumors that are not cancellation, or it's like drama, <laughs> and, you know. Doom. And that, so, that, that's how, if you want, because, you know, if you want to make us believe your, your set of rumors, don't be like doom and gloom Mm. just give us something that's nice and we'll give it some consideration you know something canadian there you go because (laughs) discovery is a canadian show uh and also i have because it's it's listed in there that uh, because um they they built uh because cbs built a new studio in the surrounding of toronto and Mm. i have no trouble believing that they plan to use that for the Picard show but a combination of uh, tax uh, deductions from California and Patrick Stewart wanting to remain in California kind of changed the decision so they might just put the Section 31 show in this new studio if they if they want to continue because thing is as I said previously they don't have the space for two Star Trek shows in Pinewood Studios. So oh. that might be why they can't do Section 31 and Discovery at the same time right now. So they might want to wait either for Discovery to finish to use this, the, the space in the studio or they want to wait for the studios to... In, I think it's Mississauga. I'll have to look it up. But Or they might want to wait for that audio studio to be finished building before you know putting a whole bunch of new sets in there plus time for construction uh, rigging and all so <laughs> so sorry yeah. i'm just um reading through that thing yeah so the reason according to this person arium was recast was because the actress to, was to allergic makeup. to the makeup which Makes sense. I mean, we Possible. heard that. We heard that in the past. A lot mm. of actors that had kind of bad reactions, and given that she has more screen time this year, yeah. 
So why would I mean, you? Yeah, I'm just a little bit apprehensive because it's like, why would you get Trek PBS and post it mm-hmm. all there? But yeah. So anyway, so that's pretty much it. Uh, hi, Christian. <laughs> uh, his wife laughed at him because he had tears in his eyes after watching Relic and TNG, and well, you know, I can feel that. I can understand your feelings. And next time she cries at a movie, well, you know, you have a free pass there. <laughs> Laugh at her. Go, what? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, nah, I mean, yeah. um, Relic isn't one of the episodes that makes me well up. Mm-hmm. Um, there's quite a few, actually, that I can't watch um, ever since like my dad passed away. Things like uh, Dark Page. People hate that episode, but I just mm-hmm. I can't watch it. Because of the ending. Uh, yeah. I think that's off, like, off the top of my head, that's about the only one. Um, but then that's because it's kind of like more about endings and stuff. But anyway. Um, it's getting late yeah. here. <laughs> it's late here. It's like 10 to 2. Yeah, well, but it, it's, 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 the same, it's the same late as usual for you, but it's later for me because of the time distortion. Yes. So next week, <laughs> it will be proper timing um yes. my clocks don't change until probably next sunday i think no it's not uh... really i'm gonna say pull this off the wall in a minute because i can't reach it properly uh the uk go clocks go forward on the last sunday in march to 31st so we're so we're, we're, we're going to have a time distortion for the next two weeks, I think. Yeah, which is fine. <laughs> um, just means 11 o'clock for me. And... Oh, no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy to do it later for you. I'm no, gonna... I mean, that's fine. Cause, I mean, 8 the only PM, reason I, I 8 did PM it Eastern is, uh, is, is better, honestly, because it gives me time to do some stuff after I'm done eating. <laughs> okay, we'll keep it as it is then. Um, midnight for me and... At least for the, for the coming week, and then you know we, we can restore it. Because uh, yeah, I don't want you, no I don't want you to start at one a.m. That's for sure. Yeah, that's <laughs> not going to happen. Otherwise, it will get to like <laughs> two o'clock, and I'll be like, "What? What? I'm really not paying attention." <laughs> but yeah, so but anyway, uh, for the next so, uh, um, for the next coming weeks, uh, it's going to be eight p.m. Eastern, uh, and uh, to give me a little bit of uh, breathing space. And uh, tomorrow I'm enjoying Captain Marvel in the moving kind of seats. Because... Uh, oh, what, you in, mean you're watching it in 4D? Yeah. Because, funny thing, uh, there's no assigned seating in the theater where I go. But there is assigned seating if you take those seats. So I figured I'd rather not take a chance and I hate waiting in line when I can avoid it. So I paid the extra for... Uh, thing is, theaters are cheaper on the Tuesday usually. So I, I enjoyed the, the rebate, and uh, I just paid extra for the moving seats. So that way, I piece, uh, I had a little rebate on the regular ticket, and I paid the extra for the moving seats just to be able to <laughs> to have assigned seating and, and not have it to, to fight for a good spot in a the, in the theater. You see, over here, um, there were, you do get like 4D cinemas and stuff, but it's so expensive. Mm. We're like, uh, I don't know what, 16 quid is in US dollars. Oh, uh, yeah, um, well. Uh, about 25 six, quid, well, uh, $25, something like that, I would have thought. Um, but normally you can go to the cinema uh, or the movies, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, but $21, um, s- yeah. £6.50. Mm. Yeah, because you see here, that costed me, like, for the Tuesday special, though. It was a Tuesday special. It costed me 33 Canadian, and I had the moving seats. So if I... That's uh, just a long Canadian dollar, and 33, that's about 18 quid for you, for two tickets. So that's, yeah. I think... Uh, 18 quid for two tickets. Yeah, that's yeah. not bad, not too bad, actually. So, okay, so, <laughs> wrapping up, it will be midnight... UK time, six, uh, seven PM eight. CST, eight PM EST, and five PM PST. There you go. 
until such time as it all shifts around again because until Tanzania. you shift mm. well yeah and, yeah because we're not moving for you so yeah well whatever timey wimey distortions yeah i'm just trying to think because then when the clocks go forward back up left down right here midnight will then should still be the same time as it is over there for you mm. like seven eight and five in theory i don't know <laughs> time zone suck well, it should all be it out. technically you know, if you think about it, you're all based off British Standard Time or Greenwich Mean yeah. Time anyway, because that's when, you know... So, you're, yeah, you're, so actually you, everything should you're be... You are zero. Yeah, we are zero. Because <laughs> like, you know, that's where we all, you know, the Greenwich Mean Time runs through Greenwich in London. So, yeah. yeah that's Everyone where time starts. Adopt British, British Standard Time. That's what it should be, you'll be. Well, yeah, the British do love standards. Bring back the Empire. <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't say that out loud never mind anyway so until next week everyone cheers for watching and uh we'll see you then do